I'm offended. I be turning turnstiles where I spend it, little mama, hella fine source. Splendid see, splendid knee, only from the back and the kid and knees. Berry cheek wine, no, I'm sipping it. I'm peeping a box, niggas trying to hit a lick like get a whip at this. Now, welcome to the school of the gifted. Pimping, we royal, a royal. I'm winded. You can tell I caught the sickness, all the lit and the cough around the beat. This is not a sneeze, nigga. They all here to witness my substitute is John C. By the sea, it's not a test, nigga. I photo in the rain, snap the drip, then we probably dip. Clean like Uncle Jip, never slip, then I'm never on the hip. Though, nigga, sipping dip, not dick. Early Douglas with the runs, let me flip my shit. Ooh, wee boy. Been had games since a wee boy. Like before, we boy had plots to deploy Big shit to destroy all of my decoys All of you being soy sauce on my neck I think I needed a bib Flashback, news flash, I ain't the only babe that be in the crib Now pass that fast sack if I don't smell it, it's mid Why the fuck would I care? I'm putting in the overtime, I heard her over clocks Nigga, who you trying to undermine? I'm dashing out the block On par with the touch, King Kong rolling up We on the scene, no cut, but when I'm picking on us I'm talking me and I, not you and you, only me and I, when I'm speaking on us, I'm talking me and I, only me and I, ain't no you and you, uh. let's be real about the number four, thank God it's not the number two. Why? Why? Well, I just had to go get it out. I just had to go get it out. Like, we ain't been on five seconds <laughs> already. Like, yeah, come on, man. I had to go get it out. Well, so we, we got, had a we team huddle and this. everything saying we weren't going to do this. Here's, here's the thing, because we always say that, and then we always talk about them. So let's go and get it out the way at the earlier well, show. Two times two is four. I mean, that, back, that, thank you for good. putting that. Thank, thank you. Thank you for spending that. No, you guys, four rounds to win the NBA Finals. <laughs> Four okay. four games to win the series, a playoff series. Okay. Some games take four overtimes, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and our new guest, favorite number is the number four. Yes. Introduce yourself to the world, man. What's going on, y'all? Um, this is your boy, Early. And he is right. Four is the greatest number in the world. Um, if you didn't know, you know right now. <laughs> why Why is four the, number, the, the greatest number in the world? Look, man. Four is equal. You know, when you think of four, you think of squares. You got your house is always in, like, a little square. It's just you can't you can't beat that number, man. Like, let's just be honest. Let's just be honest. So I bet it, your favorite song on the album is probably the fourth song. Nah, mine's the third one. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Greeks be like. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, Mr. Early, Miles, tell us about yourself. Um. Well, like you obviously he likes four. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So I'm um, hip hop. Rap, that's what I do. Um, I'm a producer. Um, I also sing as well. Um, I've been cooling in Memphis for about six years. I'm originally from Joliet, Illinois. Um, and man, it's just uh, been a beautiful ride. And um, and yeah, man, like I've been performing, doing a, a lot of shows recently here in Memphis, and I'm um, just trying to build this career that I got going. And yeah, man. So and, and most importantly, the the, the track that that we entered the podcast on is yours. Yep. Yes, so, um, that's my new joint, Tethered. Um, you can find it on SoundCloud. Uh, I produced it and um, wrote it. Um, my boy Ford, uh, he engineered it and mixed it and mastered it. And uh, I'm really surprised it's getting like this a lot of notoriety. This is the most I've seen like out of all my songs that people have really been like listening and sharing. And it was really just an idea that I had after I saw the movie Us. And I was just like, yo. This sample is insane. And I was the the weird dude. Like it was the Thursday night showing of us and I was that weird dude. I had my phone up, <laughs> Shazam in it. Like it has wasn't even on anything yet. It was just part of the uh part of the movie soundtrack. And that that night I made the beat and wrote the song the next day. What what do you think the movie Us represented? <laughs> Man. And all of us can kinda answer this one too. <laughs> Not shortly. I feel like the way I interpret it is um with the whole uh, tether concept, I feel as though it really was a lot of us. Now, I would just say it, black people, I feel like we don't necessarily use what's inside of us a lot of times. I feel like that we hide it and it starts to build up. 
And I feel like a lot of times it might build up negatively. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in turn you get this tethered. And like in the song, I kind of wanted to combine like you and the tethered and kind of like work and join forces together and make this crazy project or whatever it is. And I feel like that's what we need to do in real life. Like we need to tap into our tethered and really like evolve each other, you know, as uh, who we are as people. Anybody want to add on to that? No, that was that was nice. That, that was, was good. good. Yeah. 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 So, uh, Miles, the reason uh, we have you here for sure, you're the first guest, is because we definitely know you on a personal level. Um, but for the month of May, we wanted to bring in artists in because hip hop plays such a huge role in sports, especially basketball, football. All the players are listening probably to hip hop music. So, in your opinion, what does how, how do you feel about hip hop in sports? I think it's it plays hand in hand. Um, we can you know take it back to AI. I mean, he was one of the main mm -hmm. people yep. to kind of merge the the two beings together because he knew that you know when you coming up, a lot of a lot of these kids that are coming up, you know they're coming up from you know urban neighborhoods, and what are they going to be looking up to is is hip hop and hip hop and sports. It, they just go hand in hand. Yep. I mean. When you turn it up in a locker room, it's yeah. going to be a hip hop song. Like, let's just be honest. Nobody is going to be turning up to Elvis. You know? <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe, Elvis. maybe I don't know. You know. They'll probably lose that game. I'm just be honest. You know. I mean, let's be real. Elvis wasn't really that true anyway. He stole from black people anyway. So. Oh, 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 you're true. Oh, no. Hot take. Hot take. That's definitely true. That's definitely true. I mean, let's, let's kind of let's go around the table just a second. Like, what do y'all think the the the, the significance in hip hop plays in sports? I guess with really basketball. Like, what y'all think? Um, for me, it's an it's an outlet. I mean, I know I, I play golf, so uh, <laughs> but I, I listen to music before before I, before any round, before any, any any golf match I had. And for me, what music did for what hip hop did for me, it kind of put me in a zone. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, it it put you in a different zone to kind of block out everything that's going on. Um, in the outside world, it puts you in the zone to focus on what you got to do, um, to have a good game, a good match, and things like that. So that's that's exactly why I always I still listen. I listen to way more music now than I than I used to do when I was in high school and college and stuff like that. So yeah, the big big off scale, the same thing. Um, it's a huge outlet, and especially even going to fashion, mm -hmm. like like mm -hmm. uh, like I said with AI, the whole generation, um, uh, like fashion, um, Antonio Brown. I think the way he dressed his dress style, uh, just all those different type of players, they kind of crave off the hip hop aspect of it. I think the NBA did such a great job in just allowing their players to be somewhat because they did kind of make that dress code for Allen Iverson too. Yep. But at the same time, they did kind of allow him to be him, and then they didn't stop you know players from listening to hip hop from one, but two, you know, with the Warriors, I think last week they were you know Draymond and them and Steve Kerr, they kind of. Had a little back and forth on, you know, cutting the music down and everything. But that lets you just show, like, hip-hop is, is the way that people get their mind going mm -hmm. and, you know, get their spirit right for whatever they they, they, they going through at the moment. Yeah, so, um, let's see. Um, who's your favorite NBA player? Ooh. Uh, we talking about all well, time. Answer this carefully. Oh, answer this carefully. About, it's, about, it's, it's a favorite. It's, please, please. it's a favorite. I'm not asking who's the best. You can do both. You okay. can do both. Okay. 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 Answer carefully. Okay. Um. Currently, I would say my favorite player. I would say Giannis. I really, I really do like him right now. Currently, we'll talk about. A different answer oh, we'll talk about. because yeah. because I feel like nobody necessarily thought he was going to be a superstar first coming into the league. I, I mean, big athletic talent. But I don't think anybody thought he would be where he is, especially with the Bucks. I mean, I'm not mm -hmm. trying to hold the Bucks, but I mean that's been a you know up and down kind of franchise. So mm -hmm. The fact that he's doing what he's doing with that team is it's pretty cool. So I, I fool with Giannis. I feel like all time definitely have to say Derrick Rose. Like oh oh, oh yeah. yeah of all time like the perseverance of that man is absolutely unbelievable. Like I mean y'all can say whatever y'all want about him, but for him to score fifty points this year mm -hmm. in the game, we loved it. that's insane. That is insane. After all he been through, everybody said he was done and tired. This man came out, you know. Score fifty points. Not not many people, not many superstars can say they've scored fifty points. So I say Derrick Rose and definitely Penny Hardaway. Um, just growing up, even though like I grew up in the Chicago land area, so everybody's a Michael Jordan fan. But my dad kind of like put me on who Penny was. I didn't even I would didn't know anything about Memphis. I didn't know anything about the University of Memphis at all at that time. But I was just like, yo, this dude is a uh, hooping Michael. Like when Michael came back, I was like, who is this dude? And I just started watching just old tapes. I was like, yo. This is my boy. And if y'all play with him on 2K, 
He a cheat code. <laughs> right. He, is. he hooping. Mm-hmm. He is. So I, I I got a question. Uh, you play? <coughs> did you play sports in high school? <coughs> yes, I did. Who did you listen to to kind of get you get you hyped for a game? Um, hmm. I wait, wait, say, wait, wait a minute. What was the time zone you was in high school? Oh, oh, okay. So I was in high school from <laughs> 09 to twelve. Oh, so they can be Walker Flocker, they can be Jim, <laughs> they, can, they can be Jim Jones. Walker Loki has a couple of hits. Rasko Dash. That's what we need. Rocco, Rocco. I'm going with CEO. We missed the show. Yo, <laughs> Yo <laughs> boy. see, I would say, um, I would say probably at that time, Chief Keith was getting like big, yeah, you know, and so cool. like just being close to Chicago. So Chief Keith was probably played a lot in the locker rooms. Um, man, one of the main songs that we had blasting was y'all remember that Duro song? Like, yeah, oh, but yeah, yeah. Bro, like, that was like our yeah, that yeah. was a that was our whole like anthem. I had, I had the ringtone. Yeah. yeah, that was our anthem. <laughs> that was our bro. anthem. Yeah, but bro. also um, the Cool Kids. I, I was yeah. really big into the Cool Kids. So like, I would just throw on that bake sale, and that's what I was bumping probably um, through shoe. Football games and then track meets as well, for sure. So you're a Bulls and a Bears fan. Yes, how, I'm definitely. How how do you feel about fans who don't become fans of their teams because of certain players or certain? I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I was just throwing a shot at Shaq. You talking about? You talking about? You talking to Shaq? Yeah. 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 You know, I was looking at that. Yeah. Yeah. I was asking him. Miles did get. I think it was uh, back in like I don't know November or December. I was complaining about the Bulls, and he was like, "Nah, we don't need a wish washy fans." Oh, yeah, so, it's true. Uh, you want to get them? I took them. Yes, yeah, it's true. Yep, he left. He left with Jimmy, and it was hard. It was hard. I was like, man, it's it's rough to be a part of any team. I know Titans fans. I know. Y'all, yeah. y'all have a rough time too, mm-hmm. you know. So, I'm, but them too. I'm just really big on loyalty. <laughs> I grew up in a household like my dad's from um, Joliet, but my mom's from Denver. So mm-hmm. I've always had, I've always been a fan of like Denver and Chicago's teams, and I've just been been on, you know, just being loyal because you don't want to be the fan that moves to another team. Like all these new Warrior fans, all these new Laker fans. Like I really appreciate all the, all the. <laughs> I appreciate the old school fans that actually. Hey had man, it's dark been outside, though, but man. I see shade everywhere. <laughs> man, hey, I was loyal for nineteen years to this team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate that. Let, let's talk about a team that we're all loyal to, and that's the Memphis Tigers. You went to University of Memphis, whoa, whoa, graduated whoa, whoa, from whoa, the University whoa, of Memphis. Whoa, whoa. Don't forget you, Kentucky fans. Exactly, <laughs> Ashton. Whatever. Um, so talk. I know you've been keeping up with what's going on on campus with Penny coaching and everything. Yeah. Give, 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 what do you think about the Tigers? I think it's um what they're doing is just really amazing. I'm glad that the whole penny thing wasn't a bust, and I, I say that is because it could have been. You know, like Penny could have just been here as just a face, and the fact that he's actually putting in the work and actually making things great and growing this team and giving it like more than oh they have the potential. Like oh no, they gonna be hot. You know mm-hmm. that that right there really like spoke volumes to me. I was like wow. This man is really doing what he said he was going to do, and he's doing it, you know, being fresh. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. I think that's that's super cool. You know, it's being, um, seeing how uh, just the program, program kind of roller coaster, you know. I remember being there for uh, college game day, and us beating Gonzaga, like, that was insane. But then, you know, we see our team, like, getting blown out, you know. So, it's really cool that we're doing better sports program-wise. What issues did you face being a rapper on campus? Um, or an artist? Um, I feel like, for me, it's just, like, people being, like, are you serious about it? You know, like, people taking you serious. Yeah. You know, for, for me personally, I was um, a person that was pretty involved on campus. You know, I did the Frost Camp. You know, I was involved in SAC. So when you kind of like, yeah, okay, I do this, but I also rap. And they're like, oh, you rap? You know, everybody's trying to be a rapper. So it's just more of, like, are you serious about it? Like, why should I take you serious? That was like probably the main issue that I was facing. Okay. The last question I ask you is that because you're from Joliet, but you are in heart. Some, I, I, I give you a, a, a half and half Memphian too. Okay. So I, I, <laughs> so I just want to ask, how has the city of Memphis inspired you and impacted you? Um, That's a great question. Just because I started my music career in Memphis mm-hmm. and just the love that I received through Memphis is just almost overwhelming. Like I, I can say for a fact that 
you know, if you talk to people back home and I, t- you know, talking to them about me, they're like, Miles being a rapper is probably the farthest thing from their minds that I would even be doing. But I didn't really face that in Memphis. It was just like, oh, okay, like this dude is doing this, and oh, he's pretty good. Let's let's support him. And so I have major, major love for for Memphis, and I can't wait to give back. You know, when I do make it to where I want to be, be able to give back to both of my towns, like Memphis and Joliet. But just the just the whole music vibes, like, come on, like Memphis is music. It is hip hop. Like you can trace it back to whatever you want to like it is hip-hop you can hear it in everything you know and it's worldwide like i listen to a lot of hip-hop you know that's based out of london and just hearing the beats that they're choosing the sap- samples they're using it's memphis memphis is everywhere and it's like why wouldn't you want to be a part of it you know so i'm just very thankful that i'm in the position to be a part of it I got, and i just got one last question um again pr- definitely appreciate you here but just let the um i listen to like what what big projects you got coming up um, so right now I am working on an album. Um, I haven't put out a project in about two years, but um, this album is very big. And it's very special to me. I'm working with Unapologetic um, Kid Maestro, and uh, I brought him on to co-produce the album with me. Um, like I said, I'm a producer, so I produced the whole thing. But I wanted, I was like, this is good, but I want it to be excellent and great. And so um, I graciously like asked him to to come on in. He was like, yeah, let's do this. So. Um, that's like my next big project. Um, I have some singles that are going to be coming out in between here and the next year. Um, I have the opportunity to to actually go back to my hometown June 15th to uh, to perform my first show back that's, home that's in Chicago. Big. Oh, that's, that's big. Yeah, that's yeah. Big. so I'm, I'm like super, super excited. Y'all like the kind of first people to know no hey, but uh because hey, i got the hey, yeah news. you know breaking news <laughs> i got the confirmation uh yesterday actually um so that's that's probably the biggest thing on um, june 15th i'm gonna be able to go back home and you know have a 30 minute to 40 minute set and that's that's just huge for me it's just like wow i get to do all my music and do it for like the hometown so um that yeah definitely some really cool big big projects coming up for sure we definitely appreciate you rocking with us today, man. Uh, one of the dopest artists in the city of Memphis for sure, but we're going to make sure you know your sports. So <laughs> it's on you, bro. All right. Remember, we are powered by the Bench Podcast Network. Shout out to iHeartMedia and 1019 Kiss FM. You can listen to us on any podcast platform. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at LBR Sports 901 and join the Facebook group at the Let's Be Real group. All right, the rundown show this today, we'll go to the NBA playoffs, second round update, and the four OT game between Portland and Denver. Then we go to college. We talk about our Memphis Tigers. Third straight week, we talk about recruiting, and we're going to talk about a lot of big developments that happened last week. And also, Arizona is uh, officially on the investigation for the NCAA. Then uh, we'll bring up what's going on with the big three, some big – what the draft happened yesterday too? Mm-hmm. Yep. Then we'll come for that. Two our famous and our new theme song. Is you trolling? Is you trolling? <laughs> troll? I might nah. be. <laughs> <laughs> but let's first start with the four overtime game. Who all stayed up for it? Uh, I think. I th- what me and you? I think that was it. Honestly. I think Scott was up. Did, I was at a bar stay? watching it. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, never mind. I was up, but I was running off five straight wins. Yeah, I was like, was that the night we were yeah, playing? Yeah, that was the night we were playing too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I looked at the phone like, dang, it, it's it be the your own, <laughs> It be your own people, bro. <laughs> it be your own people. I ain't gonna lie. I looked down at my phone like, dang, it's a close game, but we streaking right now. So, I ain't trying to <laughs> <laughs> so no, I, I definitely didn't watch it, but damn. Right. Four overtimes. Yeah. Um, Jokic. Now, <laughs> bringing back what you said about Giannis, mm-hmm. Jokic was that player mm-hmm. when he got drafted. No one knew who he was. And look at him now, like. Doing amazing. He played 65 minutes in the end of the game. I thought he lost 10 pounds, too. Man, what, <laughs> man hey, he was tired. He was tired. He was tired. Very conditioned. Right. The first, I think it started the first overtime on, bro, was like. Dead. <laughs> yeah. I don't even remember the regular, the, the, like the regular period. All I remember is just the four <laughs> overtime. Cause that was what, that was a whole different game within it too. Yeah, it just, um, and I just I, what I appreciated most about the game, it was just shot after shot. Like it was yep. so many big shots, 
being taken and making too. So I just I, I loved it uh, from Dame to CJ McCollum to shout out Jamal to Murray, CJ yeah. so saved that game. Yeah. Rodney Hood and Rodney, 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 Rodney Hood, Rodney Hood Ooh, a name. <laughs> that was a name. Yeah. So you've been I, sitting there for the last twenty minutes. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that's what I appreciate about the game. Sometimes you can have these overtime games and it's just like, dang, this is a drag. Like, why is this game still going on? But that game, I was again, I was at the bar and I was pretty lit. Yeah. <laughs> but I was watching the game. I was like, dang. Like this is a really good game. Like I said, I, I love when games are going like that back and forth. So it was it was a really good game. Then yeah, also Will Barton showed exactly the type of player he is. Yeah, if it's not a if it's not a shout was, out the Will, a lot of Denver fans were like getting so frustrated because you know he that kind of player like Jr. He's, Smith, he's streaky, he's yeah, streaky. He uh, making great play, but then he make a dumb play like right out the Will, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he kept doing it. Like I think towards the end of the fourth quarter, the game kind of went to overtime because of him. Like mm -hmm. in both I aspects. Was gonna say, didn't he make like the game time layup to send it to overtime? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> and that was like, after like he kept messing up. He's <laughs> such a plus minus. Yeah. It's like yeah. plus minus. Plus minus. Like very even, evened out, even killed die. Yep. Then to continue that series, they're going to game four. Uh Portland won that game. But mm -hmm. then game four, Denver came back and won and tied the series up. And Will Barton came too big again in the end of that one. Uh Jokic had to hey, he been up. showing out slick on a slick. Like he kept him in that overtime game with his defense. Yep. Scoring here and there, but it was just I was happy to see him doing something representing Memphis. And then Honestly. also he used to play for Portland. Portland trade. Yeah. yeah. Revenge factor. I mean it's it, you know how Portland is. Honestly, it's either you gonna go big or you gonna bust. So at Portland, you either gonna do something or you're not, and you, they get rid of you. Yep. I mean, yeah. Elliot was there at one point. Elliot Pat, was Elliot was just, yeah. So it's just yeah. like you had Memphis products that were there. They didn't do nothing. Cool, get them out. When the last time Portland made a splash since Brandon Roy? Good. Mm. Yeah, that's a name for you because yeah. you ain't heard that name in a minute. So <laughs> Portland just. It, when they don't succeed, they know they have to break stuff up and send people out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I honestly expect the same thing if CJ and Dame didn't do anything. Mm. Nope. So, how do y'all feel? I forgot who the, our predictions were, but what do y'all feel was going to happen for the last three games of this series? I think me and you picked Portland in 6 2, and I think Sky and Trevor <laughs> picked. Denver in seven. Yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna still roll with Denver in seven just because it's it's kind of it's 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 still happening. I just think that Denver is a little bit more deep um, than Portland. And I think with them having more players that can score a little bit, um, that are kind of let them be able to win a, a, such like a game seven, even if it is in Portland. So no, game okay. seven would be in Denver. Yeah, oh like yeah, game seven's at home for yeah, Denver. So. Yeah, so yeah, Portland better not let that happen. Yeah, one got winning six, so I stick with mine. I'm going to stick with mine, too, and I just hate the fact that Cantor's hurt, too, because Jokic, like I said, is just going ham, he's trying. and you don't have anybody. He's trying his best, too. He's trying. He's trying his best. take this through it, and go and keep right. pushing, man. <laughs> you trying to win. But, man, how you feel about the series? Yeah, I would go with, um, I'm going to go with Denver in seven because if, if the Blazers don't pull it out in that six, I just don't think they're going to be able to keep up on that seven just because mm – -hmm. Um, Dame is gonna. I feel like Dame's gonna put his all in that six game. If he doesn't come out on top on that, I feel like he's gonna really be tired for that seventh game, and they're gonna really rely on him. And I don't think he's gonna be able to. I mean, I love Dame. Like what he's been doing is amazing, but it's like you can only put the team on your really? back so far. It's really up to him because he's been getting outplayed by Jamal Murray in this series. Ooh. Hot take. Yeah, yeah, but Jamal Murray been exposed this whole series <laughs> yeah, too, though. Yeah, he's been, he's been, oh, he's been exposed, <laughs> yeah, bro. I know. I'm saying like um, just, just period, like dang offense. He's been like he's been off the last three games for sure, and Jamal Murray has been putting up numbers. So, but I know what you mean. The defense is uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether it's the switches or whatnot. Because Jamal, if you notice, Jamal Murray was hitting shots over what what was it, Cantor. Mm -hmm. It was the isolation game. So once I got your center out here, okay, I'm a yep. I'm a mm -hmm. make space. Yeah. So it may not, you know, do the same for the Dame, for Dame honestly, because somebody else may be guarding Dame that's a better defender off those rows. They know to play above the screen. They know to play uh, play below the screen. Like they know he a, they they know he a shooter. <laughs> yeah. So like he said, he had to extend his game. So they know to go over that yeah. screen now. So it's just it's easier to defend him when you know he can shoot out there mm -hmm. versus Jamal Murray. The isolation game, oh we, oh, we didn't switch Cantor, so boom, he going to take care of Cantor. Go eight points right in there. So, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm still rooting for Dane, especially after what he did to Paul George. I'm sorry. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't never root for Dane. I don't never root for this man. But the fact that he did that and was completely disrespectful, came into the series the same with that same energy, and even though CJ stepped up, 
it's just I'm glad to see Portland making a run since mm-hmm. Brandon Roy once yeah. again. So uh, I, I I'm not wishing bad on Denver or nothing like that because Denver has a nice solid lineup. But I want to see Portland actually make a run so it doesn't ruin Dame's kind of legacy at mm. Portland. Because okay. right now they're going to be like, well, he never made it far in the playoffs. They barely made it to the playoffs. Yeah. He's a great player, but he never made it this far. Versus someone like Jamal Murray, he still got years to go. Yeah. He Denver. still got time to prove himself. Yeah, Denver, sure. Denver can improve oh, yeah. just like how Philly can improve or yeah. Boston can improve. So they still got time in Denver. It's just their first wow factor. Everybody's shocked at that yeah. they're doing this. So honestly, for a better round, I don't think Denver got enough for neither firepower on Golden State or Houston neither though. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Golden State and Houston. Two. Two two. Yeah, there you go. Two look- two. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, play the same. I'm like, <laughs> at, at at this one, I'm just watching with y'all, man, for real. Um Steph Curry is not looking like Steph Clay, don't get me started Clay. with him. KD's showing he's the best player in the world, but even the best player in the world still needs Giannis. help. So Oh, so so that that last line right there. <laughs> yeah. When folks try to say that for LeBron, they don't that don't qualify neither. What you mean? Folks, LeBron is the best player in the world, but LeBron can't have help to to win. But KD, I never, Le- I never said LeBron didn't, couldn't have help. I'm just saying LeBron isn't as good as people think he is. That's always mm. been my case. Mm. I and know, I mean, man. he can use. Uh, but I mean, but at the same time, y'all know me. Jump string teams do not advance well in in, in clutch situations. You know, uh, we seeing Clay Thompson not hit nothing. We see stuff. First Perry of all, you know he's streaky stuff. anyway. Yeah. I mean, but at the same time, it is. Well, I think, like I said, I'm just watching with y'all because it's about money I mean, at this point. Houston and jump shooting team too. Yep. I mean, yeah. but you're going against each other, so it's like yeah, it's scary. It's two yeah. two, yeah. <laughs> and, that, and that's why. But I, I don't the, know. It's it's effort too. Yeah, I think the problem with Golden State has been you guys have gotten away from what's worked for y'all on offense. Like yes, these le- games three and four, I see you guys running a lot of isolation. Especially run a lot of isolation for KD. Basically, what mm-hmm. you guys did in the Clipper series when they were disrespecting him, talking about Pat Bev and stop him. So you <laughs> well, 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 Pat Pat Bev is, is a nice defender. Yeah, I'm not saying he's bad. I'm not saying he's bad. Don't don't do my boy. He did a pretty good he tried. Try. He tried. I'm not saying he's not a like, bad. Yeah, he got, of course, if, if KD is that much taller than you and you can score it like that. Yeah, he gonna do it, but Pat gave his his gave his all. He gave his all to when Tony Allen guarded him when the yeah. Grizzlies played him a couple years ago. Okay. Pat Bev gave his hard, but KD gave him fifty. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I think you guys just need to get back to what you guys do best as far as your ball moving on offense, and I think that style of play opens up opportunities for Clay because I noticed a lot, especially in game four, where when Clay got his touches, he looked like he was rushing just trying to get his shots up. Just so because running shot. the, yeah, running this ISO, these ISO plays with Steph and KD is taking away shots from him. And it seems like Clay is just trying to get in where he fit in. But of course you That's why he leaving next year. Who, Clay? Uh, I think he stays. Clay ain't going yeah, no damn. He stays. Draymond gonna leave. Yeah. My <laughs> issue with, with the Warriors, um, and we kind of talked about this before we went on air, is I think it's their lack of defense. I think one thing that's been able to separate Golden State uh, from the rest of the league is their ability to to kind of put you away in the third quarter by, by them making shots. Steph, Steph going off, Clay going off, KD going off. But it's also their defense, too. Yep. And I'm not sure what the heck is going on, but y'all defense is it's it's absolutely terrible. Like, it's yeah, it's, I think us starting Iguodala instead of Bogut is hurting. I'm not I'm not sure what Steve Kerr is going on in his head, but that's hurting because the run and gun offense that we have is better in the third quarter when you know you you, you picking up still. You know you you going through halftime, so you probably just got to stretch more. But I don't know what it is, but that. The starting lineup, the the what's the, the Hampton Five? That should not be our starting lineup. It should not be our starting. The what? Lineup. Well, it's it's, it's not bad. The, the lineup that's isn't bad. Name. It's um, mm-hmm. it's it's the old saying: your offense affects your defense, right? So mm-hmm. when you're not making shots, when Steph isn't pulling shots from 35 feet, when KD is not pulling from 30, when Clay Thompson not hitting six threes in a row. When th- when those things aren't happening, then that's enough, that's affecting their defense. Uh, I'm gonna say that's energy more than anything. Yeah. You driving off your teammates making those shots. Yeah. To to make okay now I'm gonna play defense because KD just smack on Clay just smack on. We gonna mm-hmm. you keep yourself hyped. Y'all energy ain't the same. ISO ISO game is like okay do your thing, see if you can score. If you don't, we gonna we just gonna go on the other end and see if we can stop them. That's honestly it's energy as far as Golden State goes. Like Brennan gun energy, keep it up. 
Make sure they don't make shots. We got ca- we got we got the the, the the shooting offense. Like that's all y'all capitalize on, honestly. Yeah, and I think you got to commend Houston that's too easy. for making that adjustment because when they, when Steve Kerr went with the Hampton the Hampton Five, Houston went small and they basically just said, okay. We're gonna slow it down. We're gonna ISO with James Harden, and we're just gonna beat you guys up on the boards. Like PJ Tucker. PJ, exactly. I was just about to say PJ Tucker has been a problem. I don't see how. Hey, it's been hey, a problem. But it is. I can remember a couple, couple podcasts ago. I said something about PJ Tucker. We talked about him, you know, because he was. A, I don't remember that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, he was talking about him in the in. in I was talking about head. yeah, him yeah, being a sneakerhead. Yeah. Shout out to this form, this other sneakerhead doing his thing. <laughs> so yeah, but he's been a problem, and and it's not just been with you know, of course with his shooting or whatever, but it's just his energy. Like he's. Every time a shot goes up, he's crashing the offensive mm-hmm. glass, which is actually hurting Golden State because they can't get out and run. Um, and then occasionally getting a few and ones, occasionally hitting the three pointers in the corner. So PJ Tucker's been a problem with these past two games, especially in three and four. So I would like to see what Steve Kerr is going to do going forward. I don't think this Hampton Five should be starting, but and we kind of touched on this also before we went on air. Like Golden State doesn't need Boogie, but they could use him right now. Yeah, so sure. an announcement did come out that he will return this season. If y'all get son? make it to the finals. Really? Listen, James, yeah. James Harden trying to end y'all. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, Terminator Harden, apparently. Uh, <laughs> man. I uh, I agree when you say um y'all should put Bogut back in the in the lineup just yeah. because man that rebounding and it's just what you said the energy you know that's what PJ Tucker has been bringing mm-hmm. is that energy and the fact that he's you know crashing these boards and and War is kind of just looking around for mm-hmm. it. it's like he should not be getting all these rebounds like what are y'all doing like y'all y'all going to need somebody that's going to at least slow that down and Bogus probably going to be the one to do that so um if if that if y'all don't work that out you're going to be at home I think two guards are preparing to be at home. Stop fouling James Harden behind the three point line. I do not understand how to can play. James Harden but stop fouling behind the three point line. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but yesterday that wasn't the issue. <laughs> it's literally like players like, running oh, into him. Okay. Yeah, That's y'all can't play that correctly. correctly. <laughs> yeah, like y'all ain't doing that drill every day. On <laughs> Classic Reggie Miller, especially still Steph, Steph, Steph the leg out of trouble. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know, man. He got a lot of built up <laughs> anger right now. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Aisha Curry, man. Man. Um, <laughs> but so we go to the Eastern Conference and my best player in the NBA, Giannis. I thought the Celtics won't beat number five, too. Man, what's going on with this? Is Giannis is kicking their ass? Um, <laughs> like Paul I didn't, Pierce right I, now. I, I didn't, huh? Looking like Paul Pierce right now. I mean, I'll take it. I, I mean, I'll take it. I'll take it. Hey, you taking more L's than that. Oh, oh, Paul Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, but the Celtics are playing like the team that I'm. A, I was afraid that they would play like. And subpar. So sub, very subpar. Very selfish. Kyrie's not hitting any shots. I thought this would this would have been a team that we saw last series against the Pacers, which is why I thought the Pacers was gonna win. But apparently, they waited and said, "You know what? You know, Bucks, how many, come on, come on. You know how many personalities y'all got on their squad? What, the Celtics? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. There's only one basketball, and that's the issue. So now we're now the Celtics are getting exposed. I, you know, the I, first game I, I was one of them. That was doing the season. Best record in the NBA. I mean, I was one of the people that looked at the first game like, "Oh, we like if we see this Celtics team, they can go to the NBA Finals." What we saying otherwise? Man, we'll see a sweep. Yeah, yeah. it'll be a pure sweep. I'm gonna walk it with cold, man. Yeah, same for me. It, for, but for me, it wasn't just game one. I thought with them being able to sweep the Pacers. Now, granted, I mean, not Pacers without at, Oladipo. Though. Yeah, yeah, it was without, without Oladipo, Oladipo. But Sorry. I mean, but at the end of the day, they swept them, right? So I mean, you gotta take, you gotta. I, I mean, I it was the it way. It was for me, it was the fact that they swept them, and then they, then they, I mean, they blew the Bucks out by twenty. So that's all like, oh, okay, maybe they got to figure it out. You just that's what I thought too. That's what I thought. But now you just like. For me, I think the biggest issue is Kyrie Irving, and that is oh, of course. that's difficult yeah. to say. But I mean, it, no, it's not. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> at this point, yeah, it's difficult to say because it's, it's a top ten player in the in the, in the game, right? So I think that's why it's hard to it's hard to say. But it's it's for me it's 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 a clashing of how Kyrie Irving plays and how Brad Stevens wants to coach. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, we've said this before on the podcast, that team has run so much better. 
Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier is on, is on the floor. It's it's mm, just it's that simple. And and you got you have Kyrie Irving who wants to dribble, 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 maybe pass, but then end up going seven to twenty two. Terry Rozier can go seven to twenty two. Like I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I think he just runs that team better. And then you also have Brad Stevens who who's into moving the ball, who's into passing, passing, passing until you find an open shooter. And you have those two. Heads. Yeah, you have those two mm-hmm. button heads. So th- I think that's what the issue. And then you also got Giannis, who's another issue too. Yeah. So honestly, with me, it's their Boston is known for their defense first, right? Yeah, they're, they ain't playing they're getting killed on defense, mm-hmm. and they, I think it's leading because they falling behind. That leads to them being selfish on offense, and like um, the bench from Milwaukee. Um, we was talking about former players from Portland, Pat Connaughton, Patty. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, killed yeah, him. He's jo- nice. He's George nice. Hill. It seemed like everybody who, who everybody who played with LeBron last year killed him this year. Rodney Hood, George. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I wonder why they did yeah. 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 Y'all can stop all these shades on people. Yeah, I mean, there ain't gonna be no light up in here in a minute. George Hill in this series. I can't believe George Hill hooping the way he is. I was like, where was where was this? Have you seen Eric Blesso, by the way, Aston? Oh yeah, he's good. You better get farther than someone else. You know, oh. we're, we're, we're in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> up, you, you, you trying to create that Kentucky blend? Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. That's, Look that's here. Crazy. But I was shocked you to say that you love Jamal Murray because he played in Kentucky also. I know it, but <laughs> like I said, at the same time, I wanted I wanted Dame to, yeah. to get his, his, his shine, honestly. But, um, yeah. You had to bring up my boy. My boy at home, chilling yeah. on the couch, man, watching he, the he game. He gonna be year. chilling for the next year too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was like, he, he used to that. He used to chilling. <laughs> he, getting paid. Paid. he getting paid. He getting paid. He getting paid. He getting that bad. We'll be back. We'll be at. <laughs> so is the series over with? Yeah. <laughs> well, I caught them to win. What's the series now? What? It's three one. Yeah. I think Celtics could sneak another one, but I still honestly think Bucks gonna end it. Yeah. End it for sure. Nah, next game in Milwaukee. I don't. I think it's a wrap. <laughs> I think it's a wrap. Yeah, I, I I think it's the same. I think the team is psychologically defeated. I think after what Kyrie said yesterday in the, yes. in, the, in, the, in the post game, I was <laughs> that like, was it? Yeah, G, you that don't say it. no stuff like that. You don't nah, you don't go seven to twenty two. Who cares? <laughs> and say who cares? And I should have took thirty. Like, yeah. hold on, man. Yeah. You don't you don't say stuff like nah, that. <laughs> so I, I I think it I think it's a wrap. Stick a fork in them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we move on to uh, my new squad. And, and they ask and this what right robot now. on the other side called Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> they can, they can kill him. Uh, uh, a robot. I'm, I'm convinced. Uh, I said that when he's been. When I he said was, alien, that's but I think that kind of the same kind of. He look like an alien. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I mean, at the end of the day, he just not flashy. That's all. Very funny. Just, very Tim Duncan. I'll thing. take it. <laughs> I promise you, I'll like, shake the day. Day. I, game. I, I hate to say he moved like a PlayStation player, but he definitely moved like he's playing on the game, bro. I'm sorry. Doing, uh, one, two, or three? Two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, very, the very basics. Before you start adding all the crossovers and stuff like that, he moves like a PlayStation 2 player, bro. Hey, and then he scores. Take right there. Wow. That's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, th- this series is. Taking several turns, I think. Uh, who won game one? Was it, it was a, the, the the Raptors, Raptors won game one, yeah. right? And then uh, the Sixers came back and won the game two and three and three. Mm-hmm. But now you got again. Now it's another momentum swing, and you got the Raptors winning about like but twenty points. Game one, five right now. Yeah, one, so game four. Um, it takes Jimmy scoring thirty points for y'all to win, though. Exactly, and that you see, yeah. and it's like Jimmy favorite. only feels like playing when sometimes, mm-hmm. and y'all don't need that. Y'all need him to be there first, first every ball, day. First ball. Wow, he needs <laughs> Jimmy gonna play when he want to play. Yeah. When the rest of them niggas play, <laughs> right. you know, say, y'all don't want to play. Yeah. Well, I ain't playing then. Because the problem is like when he got to feel the he kind of tried to take a back seat and. And let it go and let Yeah it go. And then he see now Like Ben Simmons Jumper is hurting Ben Simmons ain't jump, uh, Hitting Harris, jumpers It's good But he's In that fourth I guess the fourth row The fourth option He's not yeah. playing well In that row So he's like Okay I got no choice For take over And B keeps getting sick So I don't know If he need to do something With Or her And that was gonna be yeah. One thing that I brought up too And I mean we I've, I've watched Colin Coward A lot more lately But he brought up A valid point And that point was just like The Sixers are low key They run better When Embiid is not playing Mm. <laughs> because because what that does it, that allows Ben to to drive and kick and and, and find open players. Sometimes yeah. it he feel, maybe he feels like he has to slow him, himself down. He has to slow the game down because you got to get Embiid some touches. Mm-hmm. So I mean I I, I don't want to go as far as to say that they need to trade him, but for me from yeah for me it's <laughs> I think Who, they play ben? much better. Yeah, I think they play much better. Shot. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <Where>? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Cut this computer off and get up off this podcast. I know you didn't just say that. Because if he had a jump shot, that would be easier for him to work with MVP. Yeah, you yeah, know? Like, mm-hmm. At least admit right. Yeah, because yeah. you, can, you can dump it in the post and, hey, go spot up. Boom, yeah. you good. Yeah. You, you can't spot up. Play. Yeah, <laughs> you can, you can you got to be Switch two to four feet from the basket for you to hit a shot. It's a wrap. Chuck, let me ask you this. If the Sixers have a Lakers moment and get rid of MB, will you still support the Sixers? I'm following Jimmy Butler wherever you go. Y'all oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, he's going to LA. He's going to LA. Clippers here. The Clippers. Be frank. The Clippers. He goes to LA. I'll just be in purgatory after that. Clippers, man. I feel like they're always. You're going to have to stop. Now they got the OG. You're either going to have to move to LA or you're just going to have to stop. They got a prime Spots, a great owner. Who? The Clippers. Clippers. Mm, yeah. Great owner, great manager. Yeah. Look out for the Clippers in the. They're gonna be. Oh, folks gonna get. Them folks gonna get Lou Williams a max contract. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got so solid. Now you do what? Play twenty one all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. They better not do that to Lou Williams. Nah, I'm done. <laughs> Anyway, hey, shout out to Lou Will, though, the ultimate yeah. 21 uh, champion. Because it seems like when he's on the floor getting buckets, you just know if he scores one time, he ain't missing the rest of the way. Nope. So, with this Raptors and Sixers game, it's going into the fourth, and the Sixers getting whooped by 22. Uh, yeah. so. I said Raptors and Six. Yeah. So, it's looking like Raptors and Six. I say I said Sixers and Seven. So, you know, it is what it is. I think I said Raptors and Seven. So, y'all still got Kawhi leaving? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Really? We ain't got him. He know he leaving. Yeah, like, he got him leaving. <laughs> right. <laughs> We ain't got to do nothing. That's, now, that's set in stone. Is he still going to that team? That, that team. The team with uh, the I got sources. Yeah. He ain't been wrong yet. I'm not sure. He was wrong about money. He was wrong about money. 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 No. He, what he said was. Oh, he said done deal. Oh, I he did that. say done deal. He did. Oh. Somebody, yeah. That was the fans brought up there. Yeah, that was the one thing. <laughs> but prior to him making that ish, that tweet about Monty Williams, he did say coming out when the. Lakers coaching job opened up. Yeah, Ty Lue was the front runner. Yeah, a month ago. Mm-hmm. So, to and place. before <laughs> and after the dun- the whole thing with the done deal, he did come out and say Phoenix is trying to give Monty Williams more ownership control, mm. which is why mm-hmm. you know they may pry him from the Lakers to go to Phoenix, which is why he eventually took the job. Of course, so that's. I mean, he was "quote unquote" wrong, but not wrong at the same time. Mm. So, which, which job do you think w- would you rather have, <laughs> coaching the Lakers or coaching the Sun? And I mean, just no, 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 no. This is more than just no, 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 no. This is more than just basketball. You got to think you're gonna be in the image of LeBron James. The front office for the Lakers don't know what the hell they're doing. Of course, it's La La Land, but at the same time, you got the young talent who really don't want to play for you because you damn near traded all them last season, and then you got the Suns who. Are still at the bottom of the pole, but they may have a top two, top three pick in the, at the end of the at the that end. That never the fixes anything. Yeah, I mean, but you never still got, no, 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 no. You still got Devin Booker. You still got DeAndre. Never. They, they had. They got DeAndre last year. Never fixes anything. They can have all the talent in the world. Mm-hmm. Phoenix has never been a place to win since. But could what, that Steve be the coaching? Oof. Could that be yeah, because of the exactly. front office, dude? It, I couldn't it, work for their front it, office. It, Phoenix is just as broken as LA is. Honestly. And, that, and that's what I'm saying. So, which one would you rather coach? Do I have to choose between two? Can I just say name? I, I, <laughs> I, I, no, I'm asking. I mean, if uh, I, if I, I have, no, no, the reason that you said do you have to choose is my point. Yeah. So, which one would you choose? No idea above. Choose. I ain't choose. If I choose one, I don't have to choose one. Which one? Which one? Offer me more money? I choose the Lakers. Yeah, which one? Phoenix apart. Yeah, if. Phoenix offered me more money than yeah. But I if I had to choose and they was both, oh, like, so if Phoenix offer you more money than the Lakers, you you go to Phoenix. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, same. yeah, I agree with that. Interesting. I mean, it's not bad living in Phoenix. Cause I thought mm-hmm. I was gonna go with the Lakers. That's why I just asked. Nah. Well, I don't like the Lakers. No, so I, I'm saying if the, <laughs> the offer was basically the same. But money. obviously, I would choose the Lakers. But mm-hmm. Phoenix, even if it's the same, I would I would go to Phoenix. And 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 just because it's like if you mess up in the Lakers, it's like oh you mess up. There's another coach. Like they'll they'll scrap you. I feel like. You go to Phoenix and you do a little bit good. They're like, oh, okay, you're doing a little bit good, you know. Interesting take. Yeah, it's just, interesting because I know for it was sure. Was a little bit good in Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I was just because if you take the Phoenix job, you Phoenix at least losing for what's what's Phoenix record this year? What was they record? It was like it was seventeen and sixty-five or something like that. Yeah, they yeah. had the they, worst. They won, no, it, it was second worst. New York had the worst. New York had the worst. It was a uh, nineteen and sixty-three worse than the West. And they had so, I was close. so so they had a better record than the Knicks, tied with the Cavs. So, so they, they, they can have a top three pick, but 
You yeah. mean to tell me doing decently, you almost got to win 40 games. Yeah. In order to be decent. And at that point, you can make a playoff run. But you're coming from 19 games, though. I feel like, look, you you started at 19. You hired me. Say I'm out Phoenix. Next year. You can't win 29 games and think you still finna keep your job. I feel like, oh, in Phoenix, you would keep your job. You win 29 after 19? Yeah. They're going to give you a In the Western win. Conference, too? It's improvements. It's, it's improvements. Improvement. You you'll still have a job next season if you if you if you improve. Yeah, after your yeah. second year, then you fall. <laughs> then it's like, yeah, yeah, then yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. okay, what you gonna do? It, it's just like you on your last warning at your job. Damn, I know I'm gonna get fired. Yeah, and, gonna that, and that's what I was gonna say. I just feel like because at the end of the day, Phoenix just has so far to climb in the West. Like Man. at the end of the day, like you, that's a that's a far climb to go from literally. Last yeah. in the Western Conference, not even just the Eastern Conference, mm-hmm. in the Western Conference, where you got to win at minimum, what, 40, 45 games mm-hmm. to get in the playoffs? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, you just know that you have LeBron James. If you may not, you may not say he's the best player in the league, but at the end of the day, he's top three. Yeah. So you, at the end of the day, you got LeBron James. You know ain't no way on God's green earth that they ain't going to do nothing in the free agency. Like, they're going to get somebody. So you have LeBron James. You get whoever in the world they're going to get. Like, at the end of the day, like, that's two, that's two players right off the rip. Mm-hmm. You know Golden State, some, somebody's leaving Golden State. So at the end of the day, like, it's, it's – if you're if – you, I would choose the Lakers, John, just because you know at the end of the day, the Golden State Warriors – The moves leaving. are going to be made. Yeah, so moves are going to be made. You just have versus, to – Versus, gonna versus be, <laughs> Phoenix be hoping that a franchise player come through out the draft. Yeah. And, and Phoenix, again, I mean, how many lottery picks have they – have have they had and and, and got? Man, Trey Booker was was a was I mean that was a diamond in the rough. He wasn't even top ten. He was like what 13, 14? Yep. <laughs> it, it don't matter. They never do anything with the draft picks. This is why I said I hope Phoenix, uh, Phoenix don't get Zion. I hope get John Knicks. I, oh, if the I'll, Knicks I'll don't improve, I hope they don't get Zion either because it's just like it's a rabbit hole for whoever's the top player coming out the draft. Yeah, too deep. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Until it don't happen, then it's, it happens. So, yeah, well, you know. All right. So, you'll see next week. Exactly. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you might as well go to LA. At least you know they're going to make moves. And, and Lee GM is definitely going to make moves for his last couple of years. So. Go to LA. Yeah, then at the end of the day, it's just like that's on your resume, right? <laughs> head coach of the Lakers, head With coach LeBron. of the Phoenix Suns. Exactly. Come on now. It's, it's, I feel that. It's, 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 it's on your resume. It's all about legacy. And it's like if you can take a team and actually do something with it, like they're going to remember you for sure. I mean, Definitely. yeah. Ain't like, nobody, nobody you know, going to remember you at Phoenix winning 32 <laughs> games. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you. I, I see your point, though. You I see know, your point. Like, I, I, would, I, I would rather take that because it's like, dang, if you fail, everybody, well, I mean, we mm-hmm. do we do is going to fail. Yeah. But if you, you know, if you flip the script it's like dang, i didn't expect that so you get know? a twist on that so yeah. get a twist. while we're talking about the lakers did lebron owe magic a conversation no did magic, <laughs> you mean magic owe lebron yeah, conversation I mean, you know? did magic oh, call him i mean did you watch the shot huh did you watch the shot did magic call him? no i was asking just for the sake of it i wasn't asking no. like y'all know me i don't Forget. give a damn about Forget. that well, what's up? What talking about? <laughs> like magic didn't call lebron so lebron didn't owe yeah. nothing to anybody okay my thing is magic was there to bring lebron to la he did his job he bounced lebron is there to bring the Lakers a championship. We gonna see how that go. But, right. LeBron you know. just keeping it real. Like, hey, you could have yeah. just given Kyle and said, "Kiss my ass." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was funny. Like, that was hilarious. <laughs> like, like, I just wanted to ask y'all that while we talking about the Lakers. I so. he owed it, but I mean, yeah, it would have been a common courtesy. Just, you, a le- you a legend? Yeah, just right. hey, bro, I came here because of you. You yeah. could, you know, just say, "Hey, I'm out." And be like, "Oh, okay, appreciate that." Appreciate you know, it. appreciate yeah. for everything you didn't gave to us mm-hmm. and brought me here. You know, to. Do this, yeah. Magic showed up at twelve o'clock midnight on the day of free agency. I mean, <laughs> I mean that mean you you. I mean then you cared about him, so for right. you to not say anything to bro, like that that was messed up. That was messed up. Well, he's gonna move on to college and this big recruiting news that's coming with Ivory beloved Memphis Tigers. Scott. Take it away. <laughs> like. Again, yet I am happy with my only one favorite team that's actually doing something. Um, so I guess breaking news since we last discussed. Um, I guess the big the the, the the big breaking news that that kind of, that happened last week was um, a, um, a prospect they've been going after, which is um, R.J. Hampton. R.J. Hampton, who was who was originally supposed to come out what next year, yep, yeah. but he's now reclassifying, um, and then he's now going to choose his college of his choice this summer. So that's that's a good breaking news for them because he's literally um, he he has Memphis on his list. I think on his list is like Texas Tech, who came in at the last minute. Kentucky, and Kansas. Kentucky, Kansas. Um, Duke originally wasn't on his list um, due to the fact that Boogie Ellis was there, who we'll I'll talk about in a second. Um, Boogie Ellis and Trey Jones returning. So um, Memphis being um, Memphis being on the list of a really good point guard who is probably. He can, he can go top five in any draft, whether it's this coming draft, next year's draft, yep. 
the year, uh, draft exactly. five years. It's it, it's good. It's good and refreshing to have somebody um like that on Memphis's list. Um, so then right after that, I think uh, Boogie Ellis, who was a top thirty top point 30. guard, yeah, top thirty top point 30 guard. Player. Uh, um, in this past uh, past class, who had already uh, committed to Duke, um, has recommitted from Duke. Uh, is right? Yeah, decommitted. Sorry, I said recommitted. He decommitted. Well, yeah, got asked to release from his letter of intent. There you go. Because yeah, he did only signed the letter of intent. Yeah. So he, um, so he has gotten a release from Duke. He's also rumored to possibly want yeah. to come to Memphis, which really because he chose Duke over Memphis. Yeah. So yeah. So now that he's now not going to Duke, Memphis again now is in is, is now um in play for him. So now you got you got potential R.J. Hampton, who's a top five player. Um, yeah, Boogie Ellis, who's top 30 in the country. Again, you still got Lester Keonis, who's scheduled top to... Top 40. Yeah, top 40, who's a really good shooter, which Memphis needs a shooter. Um, he's scheduled to... Um, he's really... Yeah, he's scheduled he, to announce he'll Friday. He'll announce it by the time next episode. We don't know. Yeah, he's, 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 he's scheduled he's Friday, to announce yeah. on Friday. Precious is soon to come after him. Top 10 prospect. Lest, um, not Lester. Um, the, the Tr- Trent and Wofford, again, is somebody we talked uh, about before. He ha- <laughs> he hasn't committed exactly. I don't know. I'm not sure why he hadn't committed yet. Let's... I don't think he's coming. I don't. I, I, I don't think, think he. I think. He, I think he's waiting on to see what happens with, with Will. Will, Will Wade. Wade. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that's what he's, he's waiting, waiting on. on. So um, again, it's just it's at the end of day. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. It's refreshing to have all these really good players. Like these aren't just like one fifty, like top one fifty. These are like top five, top ten, top thirty players in the country that are really interested in, in coming to play for Memphis. And literally, all of them have said one reason why they're interested in coming to Memphis, it's it's their coaching staff. Yeah, you, you have Penny Hardaway, Mike yeah, yeah, Mike Miller who played with LeBron James, who had a really Sammy solid career. Sam, yep. And you have yeah. Sam Mitchell. All these play all these coaches have had um a really decent career um, um and James Wiseman. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That's so big, that's big it, it's refreshing. So within the next I guess two to three weeks we'll definitely have um more answers. But last week was actually absolutely crazy. Except with RJ Hampton. He's gonna take his time. Yeah. But also um the graduate transfer from Arkansas Little Rock, Ray John Tucker. He's gonna make his decision next week also. I kinda want them to get him. Just yep. for the we simple need that fact, experience. Yeah, you need you, you need, need the experience. I'm RJ, I would, if I could pick and choose who I would want, Memphis has what, four spots, right? Yeah, and he can create a fifth one. Yeah. So yeah. if if I could pick and choose who I would want, I would want um of, of course I would want RJ Hampton. Uh I would want Ray John Tucker just because he brings he he has um, he has he has the veteran um, leadership. Um, and then, and then, then at the end of the day, you just know he can put up buckets, mm-hmm. and you need somebody like that. Um, Lester Keonis, um, and then Precious Achua. I think those four players with who they're returning, and then at the end of the day, you got Penny Hardaway, you got Mike Miller, you got Sam Mitchell. That's uh, that's See, a top five team going into next year. The log down they're running to is <clears throat> Hunter Hunter is not making this issue. I guess around July, August, mm. and it's I'll like, can you wait on him? But I know it's like a, another option is go ahead and get Boogie Ellis in with those other three players you just named, and you can create the fifth spot for RJ Hampton. But mm-hmm. if that happens, you just in the I smell you overload. You got too many players at that point. I <laughs> smell an overload. Yes. I am not going to lie to you. That's an overload at that yeah, point. So the, yeah. I feel like you finna push away your, your, yep. player, your current players right now. And kind of burn the bridge just a little yeah, so bit I think because it'll create competition. It will. Bro. It will. But you're talking about top caliber players is coming in. Damian Ball and it, 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 Alex de- Lomax ain't playing. It depends on their mindset. You got to know. Uh, for me, it, it it depends on that that player's mindset because at the end of, I mean, these are these players that we're missing. Most of them are one and done. Mm-hmm. So if all of them leaves or majority of them leaves, then as as Alex Lomax as Tyler Harris, you can think, okay, well, next I mean, year. I didn't get much. But, play. You well, next year, well, you're recruit again. again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You but then who's to say they get? Somebody like again, because I, mean, I heard on the radio, who's to say they get a, a play of the likes of like RJ Hampton again, of, of pressure that you'll get of, of James Wine? Because I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't happen every year. It does. I mean, it, it can happen, but the likelihood of that happening yeah. is what? It so doesn't, can't, but can't, 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 as a player yourself, can you see yourself taking a back seat and you know, like, you one of the hometown favorites? Mm-hmm. Taking a back a back seat to thing. four more players coming in versus I mean, you know what what you already shot. got. I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm sorry, like no, it's a, it's a valid point. I mean, uh, for me, if I was in their shoes, I probably I wouldn't mind it. Just for the simple fact, I, I love Memphis. Like at the end of the day, Penny Hardaway recruited me. Penny Hardaway at the end of the day, regardless of who he knew he would get at the end of the day, he wanted me to come to this school and mm-hmm. to see. And then I mean, Memphis has talked about getting some form of a championship for how long? And Memphis could literally be the first team. To, to bring a championship to the city of Memphis, I just think for me personally, that's just something that I would want to see. It's it's like you looking at it as a bigger goal, like I'm going to take my playtime down just in case we can win a, a national championship. But some of them kids got goals, though. Mm-hmm. Like we want to make it to the league, too, 
or we want to get our shine. Like we want to make our college career worth it. Like even though they may not put up plenty buckets, I mean Tyler Harris still got dreams and aspirations with the Tigers. So does Alex Lomax, even though he may not contribute as much. So it's just the fact that you got all your players from East that followed you for a reason to to build this legacy with you, and you finna get them the back. And you finna put them in the back. So let me ask you this question: Would you not go after R.J. Hampton and all these other players we just mentioned? If I'm Penny and I'm trying to win, yeah. Okay. But I'm saying no, if no, ain't no buts about it. <laughs> it is a, it is a but about it because it's just like okay, um, I was in Walmart last night and I met with a former coach, well, assistant coach, and I addressed that one of my former coaches has a problem recruiting players now. And it's simply because he burnt the bridges with players. Mm. And I ain't going to put them on spot. Y'all know who I despise and y'all know where y'all went to school at. But he's literally burnt bridges with players because he's trying to recruit this player, trying to recruit this player. This player got to take a back uh, back seat. You got to take a back seat. I've pulled you from where you were to bring you here to basically sit you down because I found somebody else better. So he's going to burn that bridge. So eventually it's just like, damn, okay, Penny's recruiting all these players. Am I even going to get to play? Am I actually there for a reason or am I am I there for a backup? Yeah, because competition don't matter in that case because yeah. like, R.J. Yeah. Hampton, you're not going to – You're not – like, you're going to have your dream lineup. You want your your boys to play, and then you're going to have that lineup that's, oh, you ain't going to take my spot. Cool. That's fine for practice. Mm. Game-wise – Nah, so and the energy's not going to be the same on the bench. I hope it doesn't come a Boston Celtics situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that's it's an overload. That's yeah. that's that's uh, that's the downside. So the thing is, though, it's a good problem to have. Well, yeah. well, yeah. well yeah. Yeah. As, a, yeah. as a fan, as, as a fan, fan. yeah. yeah. No doubt. Where have we been the last couple of years? Toby Smith and stuff, man. man. <laughs> it's couple years was rough. <laughs> it's great to even talk about this. Right, I'd now. rather be talking to, like I said, talking about this than not talking about it. So, but yeah, that's the news for that. Uh, Trevor, you got anything? No, not really, man. You guys pretty much hit the nail on the head as far as what's go, uh, going on with the Tigers, man. But uh, I think y'all guys brought up a very valid point about this potentially could be a Boston Celtics situation. So I mean, you just can't. I mean, you talking about four of the players coming here versus how many he already got? Four. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so you two, uh, potentially, we'll just say eight, eight new players. Tyler Harris in the addition in the Temptations it's back there. It's only 40 minutes in the basketball game. <laughs> like, you can't like tell me game. R.J. Hampton come here and uh, Wiseman and Boogie Ellis not yeah. going to play 25, yeah, the, 30, exactly. 32 <laughs> minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can't tell me they're not going to play a majority of the game if they your uh, Fab Five, basically. I'll say this, though. I think if they thought, if they think it might be an issue, I think they would have transferred by now. Because Antoine Jones did the same thing. A lot of them folks ain't committed yet, though. True. You got four people. Y'all talking about and up I in the think, air. And they might have pushed Antoine out the door a little bit, too. Okay. Because of the, his attitude and things okay. like that. Penny had trouble winning last year. So we we still got people still making their decisions. It ain't too late for them, but at the same time, it ain't too late for the players. It's already there. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they win their options. Just like, oh, man, we finna have three-point guards. Somebody, somebody finna be a third four, string. Five, yeah, yeah, that's what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah. Somebody, somebody some, either somebody not playing or I'm finna get moved to shooting guard. Yeah, and if I if I'm low max, I can't shoot. Yeah. So yeah. it's a wrap. So <laughs> that's what I said. Like it's it's no, that's that's not finna happen. I'm not gonna be happy about that. I'm finna dip. Yeah, maybe you can go three guard line up and then you got DJ Jeffries. <laughs> go for guard. I forgot about DJ. Yeah, so it's just true. And you still got Lance Thomas. And it's like <laughs> no, it's this one to be an overload. It, you can be happy as a fan because we made we're the ones making this super team. We're Golden State right now, but that, I feel like it's gonna be a problem if all those players actually do come. Yep. So move on from that to uh, guess announcing that Arizona basketball is officially under investigation. I think they had like a number two, one or two. We uh, told y'all, class, if you ain't a blue blood, don't do it. Yep. <laughs> don't do it, blood. <laughs> so, uh, Man. You know, this Sean Miller get caught. They, now, his assistant <laughs> told him, he said he paid uh, the under eight, what, 10K a month? 10K a month? Sounds fair. Yeah. Deserved it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> deserved it. I mean, yeah, if you paid him 100000 for the time he was there, so 10K a month, <laughs> 10 months. So, uh, hey. <laughs> And told you, move from there. You ain't a blue blood. It's a wrap. Yep. 
So, big three, Took. Uh, yeah, so the big three <laughs> had their draft, I think, last night or the night before. <laughs> and when I'm a big fan of the big three just for the simple fact of they're more laid back, they're more personal. You know, you, there's physical basketball to be played, you know, the hearts of the players that are the coming back. It's just pretty dope. And like I said, they're coming back for their third season. Uh, they had a draft last night. Some of the players are very recognizable. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Got returning players: Corey McGetty, Katino Mobley, Quinn Richardson. That boy just named the, the best guy in Big Three: Corey McGetty. Oh, you yeah. never, yeah. You yeah. Would I don't never know, guessed bro. that. We I might, like Raul. We might have a troll in now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, bro. Yeah. Raul, bro. Corey, Corey McGetty <laughs> making it look like I, I should have been playing like this in the league. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going right, but now the, uh, right, last right. night the first pick was uh, Royce White. And, you know, y'all know he was the player who had the fear of the flights, but yeah, apparently exactly. he had his first oh, flight yeah. experience yesterday at the draft. So, how did he um, play college ball? Cool. What you mean? They uh, took a bus. They took a bus. Took a bus. Train, bus. Yeah, I, I know, know he's somebody. Go, I know he some, took no bus from Iowa all the way to Texas. Somebody drove. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. know the mega bus is forty dollars, bro. You know, go right. slap him on them bus. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get your gear there. Don't just you, you just get on the bus. We need to go to class then. <laughs> 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 you gotta get on the bus. He was a boy. It don't matter. Right there, no play four years. He played Miss Gill right there, no four years. Four years. Three or four years. <laughs> yeah, I hope he ain't red shirt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a few players y'all may recognize that were drafted in this draft: Larry Sanders, Mario Chalmers, um, Bunsey Wells, Ooh. Jason Richardson. Oh, y'all know Mario Chalmers very well. Yeah, I, shut up, damn man! Shut up, man! I don't uh, know if you can come back no more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dante Green, C.J. Watson, uh, Sam Young, Carlos Arroyo. I'm, wait, I'm waiting uh, on that uh, one name. I'm waiting uh, on that one Mike name. Taylor, hey. Jamario Moon. Yeah, uh, Chris ready. Johnson, Chris Brandon Johnson. Rush, and Greg Oden. Oh, no, Chris Johnson. First of all, he gonna last three games, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> three is generous. That's three is generous. generous. I was like, 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 I give him two. He is literally two. not leaving the paint. I mean, if he they, leaves the paint, it's a wrap for they, the rest they of his career. How you think his body is feeling? Say, man, we, we all gonna see. <laughs> we all gonna see. <laughs> we all gonna see how. We gonna see him on a stretcher. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, it's hard to not like when I see his name and just be like, bro, you were supposed to be the next shit. Basically, and you yeah, yeah. and you injury so prone. One, one of the biggest so busts. So my my favorite team is the enemies. They got get, uh, Gilbert Arenas, Perry Jones the third, Lamar Odom, and that's the team that drafted uh, Royce White. What that sound like a, a oh, thug? Okay. That's a thug. Yeah, 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 yeah. They the enemies. Yes. That's a thug. Are, are they missing this Crendon? So they gonna have. <laughs> oh, oh God, they gonna have guns, drugs, and prostitutes in the building. It's a wrap. Uh, uh, another reason I want to talk about this as well, and we can kind of open up discussion, is because the brand, one of the brands that are first uh, professional sports team that have CBD sponsoring them. So they are partnering with a marijuana company, and I think it's one of the dopest things. It's about time. But what do y'all think about that? For 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 a professional league that's that's telling you to stay off the weed. You know, we got a league coming up that's telling you, hey, y'all, here y'all go. I mean, it's, it's, it's becoming more acceptable, slick mm-hmm. around yeah, world, yeah, worldwide. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's, it's money. It's, it's just it is, it's money. It is money. slick because it's still. I mean, yeah, it's still like, you know, you still got to produce yeah. and do all this, but it's becoming more acceptable besides you getting caught selling it. Um, it's money in it, though. Yeah, it's money in it. Wow. And at the same time, if that player still producing and you caught him doing it, well, keep doing it. But as soon as you start slacking, hey, I'm, I'm going to be on you. Mm-hmm. Like, like I I just don't see it being a, that big of a problem. Why do y'all think it is still a problem within sports? Within sports, black and where, where, where. Like, especially when most of the, the players yeah, are black. That's why. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's exactly the why. That's the that's it. <laughs> because it's not legal in all states. I yep. think that's why. It's I think the states. moment it kind of becomes more legal in more states, I think they really at some point they won't have any issue. I mean, they won't have any. They can't do anything. Yeah, they can't yeah. do anything. But that's what I, that's basically what I was trying to say. So I think I think that's what it is. But I'm also interested to see because I know players have talked about how they wanted it. They wanted to be approved to kind of help with the pain and mm-hmm. the headaches and stuff like this. So I, I'm that's interested. What I was saying last night. Yeah, so I'm interested to see how they how they play 
Oh, uh, right. well under the influence, I'll say that. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure most of the players in the big three are probably going to be high playing. Probably so. Like, <laughs> ain't nobody about it. Probably going to be high playing. Steven Jackson. Probably. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> now I think, now I'm I'm think about Steve it. Jackson, I'm pretty sure going to be like rolling one up. So now I think about it. Greg Oden might be high here. <laughs> he and, uh, he this, looks high all the time. Sean probably. But, high but high. in order to help with the pain and the injuries, <laughs> yep. he, gonna need he it. might be. They won't. Sean might be high. Jay Smooth may be high. Gibbon Reed's definitely going to be high. Yeah, I mean, most of them were were getting high when they were in the league. Yeah, he's going to, yeah. He was probably the reason why they got this sponsorship, too. So, shout out to Al Harrison. Shout out to Al Harrison. Shout out to Sean Williams, too. Oh, yeah. Who's also on the stage. I'm Definitely. Yeah. And uh, Josh Smith. Shout out to Sean Williams. Shout out to Memphis. To who? Uh Huh? Josh Smith, who's also on the team. Good. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm back in middle school with all these names. I'm interested to watch the enemies, dog, just to see how this thugged out team is really going to exist. Straight, <laughs> straight thugs. I, I was just first possession. I expect Gilbert Arenas to just jack one from the four point line. Is Gary line. Payton just their coach? <laughs> yes, nah, he is. Uh, not their coach. Is uh, Rick Mahorn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on. That's going to be broad. Speaking of Gary Payton, did you guys see when they was having the big three combine? When him and Jason Terry had gotten to a, a shooting contest for a thousand dollars, what? Oh. That's, that's, that's a quarter out of their pocket. I saw something on there. Yeah, it was it was hilarious. Like, of Come course, on. I ain't seen Jason Terry. Terry obviously, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's played the longest right now? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But if you hadn't had a chance to see it, it's it's hilarious. You know, GP basically being GP talking his trash, talking about, hey, I'm. He's like, I'm a motherfucker Hall of Famer. I can shoot better than you. So nah. they put a thousand on the line. Like wait, wait a minute. Did, did Gary Payton shoot better than him in his career? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I, I feel like there's Dwayne Wade and Paul George. I mean, not Paul, Paul George, Pierce. Paul Pierce all over again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I love this league. I'm just not a fan of it moving to CBS. We talked about this again yeah. before air. Um, one thing that I've loved about it being on um, FS1 is the players being mic'd up, them, them cussing at each other, them talking mm-hmm. trash to each mm-hmm. other. And I just don't think yes. CBS is going to go for that. <laughs> I feel like I feel like they did. They're just trying to expand. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. And I mean, at the end yeah. of the day, you, I mean, you got to make a move like that because there's money. Mm-hmm. I just, I think for for a fan, it's just like, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But you feel like it's gonna be watered down a little. There you bit. go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Sound about right. I'd say that draft went back very quickly, though. Like mm-hmm. very, very. That's because you just got to watch the NFL draft. No, 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 no. If you go back, like it, they have like two minutes on the clock, and the teams would be like, okay, here's the next. Right, fast in the NFL draft. Like oh, it, that's it, what I was saying. Right? They, they not waiting. Like they, oh. they get it in. We already know who we want, but we gonna make y'all wait. Exactly. That, that, nah, oh. Big Three ain't like that. <laughs> they, they, you, we know who we gonna pick. We gonna text it to you. Boom. Like the draft experience is fun, but dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> lot of waiting. Right. Ads. But anyway. Guess what it's time for? What's the time for? It's a smooth, nice little down. remix. Let me know if you need me to feature on the next track or something. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to sure. I'm gonna make sure I'll put you on. I'm going to make sure you put you on. Is you trolling? Is you trolling? Is you trolling? Is you trolling? Yeah, I might be. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think about our song, man. It's the perfect song. Hey. It, is a, it is the perfect song. You should add it to all y'all ringtones right now. Y'all <laughs> ringtones. Hey, hey. That's what you think about it. I feel like, you know, it. well, girl, you don't want texting you. Is you troll? <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for the idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. we didn't oh, man. We have ringtones out here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So who, who signed us off, man? And, Let uh, the guess, man. Since he already had one ready, <laughs> go. Look, y'all. I'm just. I'm, I'm saying this. Y'all can think what y'all want to think, but I feel like I'm not. I'm not the biggest Zion fan. I think Zion. I think he's a, a true, amazing talent. You know. I, I feel like you know it's one of those one time. Like we probably won't see it too many times other again. But I feel like when this man gets an NBA, if he doesn't reach his ceiling, he's just going to be Corey Maggette. I feel like that is what Zion could be. Corey McGetty. That's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. That's not not a bad bad thing thing. if you don't get as much hype as Zion Williamson had coming into college and now coming into the league. I think if you're like 
some random like top five player. De- DeAndre Hunter. Yeah, if you're somebody yes. like him or Cameron. But, I mean, or like we him. also live in a social media age. <laughs> like, you know, know like when Corey McGetty was no, coming through, we didn't have no social media. We didn't have yeah. social media like how it is now. We wouldn't even got to see what that man was doing in high school. Right. We literally got to see what Zion's been doing in high school because of social media now. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm like, Corey Gray, McGetty had a great career. You know, I feel it's pretty solid. You know, I feel like Zion, I'm just saying, worst case scenario, that is. That is him. Worst case, give us your analysis on Corey McGetty for the people who. Uh, wait, wait, a minute, wait a minute. When when Corey McGetty was playing in the NBA, who did you think of when somebody said the Clippers, Elton Brand or Corey McGetty? Oh, but mm. Mm. I feel like that's not fair. What I, mean, I feel like friend, that's not fair because I, 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 I would think of I would, I, would, I, would, I would think of both of them. No, you would think, think of Elton them. Brand and the Clippers. Yo, David Ruffin and the Temptations. No, I was, <laughs> no not me. <laughs> Who are you thinking of? It was when the them Clippers. It was D Miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yep. come on, get it right. <laughs> I, I said, but that's not. I don't think that's a bad thing. Yeah, well, solid. Well, career, give us your though. analysis on Corey McGetty. You know, big, powerful, strong dude. He gonna dunk on you. You know, mid range. Uh, you know, might shoot a three, maybe. And I feel like that's Zion. Could he, the ball? <sighs> Could okay. he pass? Okay. But I'm saying, I'm saying that's that's your low ceiling for Zion. You know, like I don't think that they're gonna give him that much room to do a lot of passing that he's doing. Uh, you know, depending on. Okay, you know. so <laughs> I, I feel like the way you just described Corey McGee was a little bit. It's kind of like Josh Smith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I would I mean, say more. I, I would mean, say a little more athletic. And I would say I would say more athletic than Josh Smith, though. I would yeah, say but Zion is two two eighty at his height. Flying through the air, Corey McGetty, yes, was a a a, a buff dude yeah. on the court, looked like he should have been playing football and stuff like that. But Zion has the athleticism that they didn't. Okay, I, I'll give you that. But like I said, this it's is a, it's a it's a changing this is, factor. Dick. This is but this is low. This is low because I mean you don't know what Zion Zion gets in. Say he get hurt, <coughs> boom, next year he get hurt again. That's, you that's know? fine. But at the end of the day, okay, Corey McGetty max weight was probably what two twenty. Swirling on there versus 280. How many people stepped in front of LeBron James when he was 275, 280, 285? You're right. You're right. Not many people. So imagine this man at full at full court. Probably big, a bigger threat than Ben Simmons. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. For me, I, I go ahead and answer that question. I just I I think it's a troll. One yeah. one huge thing that I, I love about Zion is his ability to um raise everybody's like game level. Morale. Like, yeah, I, I just, I love how he's able to do that. He's able to do a lot of different things, whether it's rebound or whether that's leading a fast break or Blocking shooting threes, shot, which anything. I didn't think was possible for him. Um, he definitely hit a lot of threes too, and his ability to rebound was crazy. So, um, I respect what you're saying. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. I feel that. Okay. Got to respect from Corey McGinn. Respect from Corey McGinn. Respect. I mean. Court McGetty had what at least a ten year career. That's not too bad. No, 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 no. That's not that's not too bad. Because I mean, on average, the NBA player gets what like three, four, maybe years. So mm-hmm. I mean, that's not bad. So, for, I mean, if you had to say now Zion Williamson is only gonna get ten years, you'd be like, eh, you would think he'd get a, bit, a little bit longer. But I, for me, I I go troll. I'm cool with that. It was a wild statement. Yeah, I like wild. Statement. I go troll and just say if he the lowest that he would go it would be a poor man's Draymond Green. I think that'll be the yeah. lowest. That's what I poor man, Draymond Green. Poor what is a poor damn? Is that a troll in itself? <laughs> I think that's. Just... <laughs> How's that a troll in itself? A troll I mean, they, 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 no, they, I see that. Essentially, <laughs> the same player. Yeah. Only Zion's more athletic. A lot more athletic. Yeah, they're essentially the He's same player. To be honest with you, really. Yeah, I can see it. Y'all do realize this man's gonna be under a whole nother shooting staff and like actually working out to the fullest now. Okay, we're saying he, right now. <laughs> he gonna be a threat. His potential is no. High. I'm saying his more potential is more. I'm saying it's always it's a right now. Yeah. The lowest, he's a boy, lowest. lowest. The floor would be the lowest. Right 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 right. That's his lowest. Right. Yeah. No, you know, dog on with how high I think is on. Come the on, ceiling man. is the roof, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> the ceiling is the roof. <laughs> so y'all about to go. Either way, that's a ten. Year, either way, he's got a ten year career. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man. Man. Granted, yeah. injuries with yeah, granted, he's going to definitely hit a LeBron. That's what. Yeah, stick with Nike. That's yeah. all I gotta say. Stick yeah, with Nike. I, <laughs> I love Adidas, but for basketball shoes, that's a different story. So next troll or no? I'll go. Based off of what we've seen troll. in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be talking ahead. to you. Um, go ahead. Based off what we've seen in the playoffs from CJ McCollum. Troll or no? CJ McCollum is a top three shooting guard in the league. Top three? 
Mm-hmm. Who else in that top three? Yeah. I'm gonna go Clay Harden uh, and uh, <laughs> CJ. Did you put Clay over Hardy? I did. That's just me. Though. That's a troll right there already. Right yeah. So Harden's a point guard. Shooting guard. I'm trying to think of. All can we can guard. we narrow this down to like maybe playoffs or something? Like Russell Westbrook is a shooting guard because it's just like CJ is. Well, you know, I feel like people slip on CJ until now. I mean, until yeah, last point, game. I don't. I don't know, man. Because. I mean, no, I, I'm seeing you with CJ, but yeah, I'm top five, but we got top five. Yeah. I'm trying to see who else. I'm yeah. trying to see who else in this. this oh, well, let's, bring, let's, bring, let's bring up. Let me see. We You're a guy. Play. Yeah, you right. You're a guy. Yeah. Bradley Bill. Brad Bill. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah. is he better than Brad Bill? I'm taking CJ over I'm Brad. Taking Brad Bill. I'm taking I'm Brad, Brad Bill. Brad. I'm taking Brad Bill. Hmm. I'll take CJ over Brad Bill. Interesting. Okay, hold on. Let, let's Brad go down Bill. some more. Uh, la, da, 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 da. We got Demar Derozan. Who? Uh, really? He, is he really? No, I'm just na- I'm just naming. So I'm it's just naming. Shooting guard's mouth. What he really? What is he really? Truly? Demar. Uh, he's a. He's a. <laughs> <laughs> we got Demar Derozan. What is two K called? Paul George. It's kind of like a point guard. Okay, it's kind of shooting guard's mouth forward. So it's like it's kind of like you gotta. You really gotta give him. He's a specific position. A slashing. I said the last episode. A slashing rebounder, maybe. A I don't slash know. A shot creator? Maybe. Something like that. Like, okay, okay. okay. Lou Williams. <laughs> you see a he's six guard. man of the year, six man. Of the year. I don't I mean, know. But still, he's a shooting guard. No, I mean, he didn't over a, him. But yeah. I'm not starting I'll him. I'll take though. CJ over yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. Donovan Mitchell. Ooh. Is he a shooting guard or a point guard? Shooting guard. He's a two. He's a two. Yeah. Who is his point no, guard? Like Ricky Rubio. Rubio. He'll be a point guard next year. More than likely. Yeah. More than likely. Dang, I don't know. I uh, might take that. I, would, I, would take, I still take it's, CJ Ryan. So you got. It's so not you, a troll. I put that. Because we're. I, I, I don't, conversation I'm, like trying to mm, figure out. I feel else. like. Because even Brad Bill, that's a. And if he I, don't know, I feel like we have to find out who who else is a shooting guard. Like they, yeah, because I, I feel like we like there are people that have slept on because they're not in the playoffs right now. Yeah. You got I've, so many combos. Like, you got shooting guards, combo combo guards, guards or yeah. point guards, shooting guards. Yeah, like point combos. forwards. Yeah. Point forwards and all that stuff. Yeah. Mm. It's not true. It's an interesting take. Yeah. Very interesting. It's not true. Very. It's wild to say off rip, but then when you think about it, it's like, hmm. That's how I am. That, that's really how I am. <laughs> yeah, really I'm going to make you think. Yeah. Nobody yeah. says that. Nobody would bring that up. Yeah. Nah, he, he doing his thing. Shout out to CJ. Uh, yeah. oh, Jamal Murray point guard. Yeah, Jamal yeah. Murray point guard. I was about to say Jamal Murray. Yeah, two. <laughs> He's a two. He's a two. Playing point right now. Uh, yeah. I feel like we we need to bring that up next episode. Like, look up a, a list of shooting guards and actually narrow it down. Narrow, narrow, narrow it down. Yeah. That'd, be, that'd be pretty dope. They yeah, actually split so positions just, between the actual wings who play small four and shooting guard. So just do <laughs> just do the basically the, the tier pyramid. That we've been seeing lately with players, with man, that's on BS. It really is. But <laughs> you got Kevin Durant a tier two. How dare you? How dare you? Dang. Did they have Giannis tier one? No. Oh, dang. not the one I saw. Oh, they tripping. Not the one I saw. Nah. <laughs> Did they have Kawhi tier one? Because it was nope. greatest of all time. I think that's oh, why. Oh, it, was, it was greatest of all time. Number one current player. At least from what no, I saw. I was saying, LeBron in number one. It was, it was MJ yeah. and, and, and was LeBron. LeBron James not supposed to be up there? Yeah. Not without Kareem or Shaq or any of them. It was they just LeBron, LeBron and Kobe. LeBron James I mean, not LeBron and Kobe. Uh, LeBron and Mike. Oh, like, Kobe wasn't Shaq? No, nah, Kobe, Kobe was tier two. Kobe was tier two. The one I saw. Hold on, Shaq oh, wasn't Kobe is definitely no. t- it, it, Kobe Kobe was tier two. Which I am? Ah, they I'm a Kobe fan. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, Kobe, exactly. Kobe is too. Exactly. Well, yeah. Because I mean, he's he's not the greatest. Of, I mean, he doesn't go for me personally. He doesn't go up there with the likes of. I mean. If you, if you got who who I mean who was all on that tier one because because I can't remember that, that tier one was just, was just Mike and, and LeBron yeah they tripped oh I'm a, I, was, I saw a different one I saw a totally different uh, one. I think okay. I, the one you I saw had like old players yeah, yeah I saw like Kareem mm-hmm. I saw I saw I think I saw like Bill Russell up there maybe yeah, yeah, not tier Shaq, one I think Shaq yeah, was up yeah, there yeah, like, tier one. so that's why I was like Kobe could be, could Kobe is definitely like tier two because all those players are like in their prime like was. Like Shaq, come on, man. Shaq, there was nobody that could yeah, stop you. Him. Could, nobody. Jordan, come on, man. You and you weren't stopping him. Like Kareem, you weren't stopping him either. I don't care who you are. So I, I, the one I saw had the, the older players on it. So that's mm-hmm. all. Like Kobe could be tier two. I, I ain't have a problem with it. Probably need to post it and see what the people think. No, I guess the one that you saw. I, don't I know. hate the one. I Some saw. folks I had had Allen Iverson in tier one. Oh, man, <laughs> we know who. You're right. You're right. You're right. We know I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You posted. Expect. Yeah. Expect. I got it right. That. Now, man. 
I got two of our layers. All right, so what, what is it? All right, tier one is LeBron and Mike. Okay. All right, tier two. Yeah, stop right there. Is it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> throw I mean, it away. If that's your tier, then Kobe should be up there. Then. Yeah. Throw it away. <laughs> it, I don't know. Is it a limit on how many? I mean, it's. I feel like this, a, this like you said, that's a pyramid. Who created it? It's, oh. I don't know who created it, but it gets hilarious after tier two, so I'm not going to even. You want me to tell you what gets hilarious? What? Max Kellerman saying that Kawhi is more clutch than Kobe. Trolling out. Kawhi is more clutch than Kobe. That's disrespectful. That's disrespectful. That's a trolling out. That's a trolling out. Max on the show. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to ask for y'all, though. Like, what, what y'all That's disrespectful. That's a troll. That's gotta be a troll. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's disrespectful. That's a troll. Yeah, I know Kawhi has a robot and all, but man, <laughs> slash alien. Nah, I I take nah. That's crazy. But anybody else get one? Well, remember we are powered by the Bench Podcast Network. Shout out to iHeartMedia and One Hundred One Nine Kiss FM. You can listen to us on any podcast platform. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at LBR Sports Nine Zero One, and join the Facebook group at the Let's Be Real Group. All right, great episode, man. Appreciate yeah, you, yeah, Miles. Yeah, yeah man. Young yeah. early. Where, where, where can we follow me on Instagram? Uh, you can follow me on Wake Up Early. Um, early is spelled E R L E E. Um, wake up early on SoundCloud, Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, and I have music on Apple Music, uh, Spotify, all that good stuff as well. So just search me and um, you'll find me. Make sure y'all go check out his single too. Yep. I'm not going to lie. I thought some of his social media was going to have a four in it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. It didn't look as cool. Mm-hmm. Right. Anyways, we out. Peace. Peace. I just I just knew he was gonna alright, so wake up early, the A is gonna be a four.